The goal of the video is to create a title page. Firstly, HTML is written. HTML is written because one wants to create the visual elements of the page. Text, buttons, color. When the code is run, the right, the screen that I see on the right side is white. To add a visual element, body should be typed, and then an element which is can be a text or a button or an image can be added. The P element was added. Usually when a game is played, one may see a button. It should be noted that after writing an element like button, one should also type a forward slash and then place it next to the word button. challenge one part of the code should be edited the body should be edited so a forward slash should be added The goal of the video is to talk about JavaScript. JavaScript is typically used by someone who wants to animate an object. So for example, uh, when the button is clicked on the right, the button should be replaced by white, whiteness, white screen. So to do that, one can write document dot get element by id Dot style and in fact another text will be added so it will be called button it will be placed next to id which refers to the value click here and some text is added okay. 
to replace a button with a white screen, we want to type style.display Probably, if display is referred to, then the value is block. To make it, to make this button be replaced by white, that none should be written. So ideally when the code is run and the button is clicked, then the button should disappear. Um, in fact, it will here the code is commented out and it appears when the bracket is removed and when it's pressed then it appears. The goal of the video is to be able to make one be able to see an image. To make one see an image, one needs to type down the element called canvas. It will be important to write down an attribute, ID and attribute will be equal to uh, C for canvas, with the width of the canvas will be 600 and the height will be 600. Next, one will have to be able to change the value of an attribute of canvas. To do that, in between script document dot get element by ID. Is first written. Next, canvas context equals canvas element dot get context. 2D. To be able to render an image, to be able to draw something, get okay, context is written. Finally, an attribute can be written. So canvas context fill style and some color. So the color can be gray. Okay. The canvas should have been written 
with a certain shape in mind. So canvas context dot fill rect. So a shape similar to that of a square. Uh, a parameter will be written zero zero. Fifty is what may represent the value of the x axis. Fifty, or rather, a hundred is what may represent the value of the y axis. Uh, fifty is the width, and then fifty is the height. A quick note is that one hundred is represents a location that is found under zero so if zero is represented over here then 100 would be represented over here um, so any positive number is always any positive number representing a y axis one finds underneath the top. So ideally when the code is run, a blue block should be visible uh, near the center. Assuming each step was done correctly. So when the code is run, a gray block appears. run the code and see an image similar to that seen on the right side. Hint. One will need to use or write down fill style. One will also need to write down fill rect three times. Finally, this block is gray, this block is yellow, and this block is violet. When the code is run, two blocks appear. The goal is to make the second block, the block pointed by the cursor, disappear. To do that, one has to make the entire screen white so to do that one can type cnv context cnv context fill style white Next, fill rect is typed and the parameters should be identical to that. That the parameter, at least for the x coordinate, should be identical to that of the one written above here. Same thing for the y width and then the height. So when the code is run, ideally the first box should disappear and an animation was completed. To go a little further, it would be interesting 
to have the block move on its own without having to type the same code over and over and over. The function, so set interval is typed. Set interval repeats or it can be used to repeat an action over and over. The number typed next to the text called function. Next to it is the number 1000 which represents milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. And in the function, the code that needs to re be repeated can be placed inside of set interval. As a result, every one second, the x the value of x, the value should change uh, by 50. So when the code is run, it should move repeatedly by itself. Uh, lastly, uh, the color should be set back to blue. So every second the blue block moves to the right. As a challenge, one can think about how to make the block move s seem like it is something that someone would say is walking. So the block should sort of move slowly and s smoothly. Looking at the cursor is a hint. So, well, the blue block seems to be jumping. because 50 is being added. So the trick would be to think about the number being used here and also time. The goal of today's video is to talk about smooth animation. Currently, some code is written. The goal is to create a blue square image. The image should move on its own when the code is run. It moves on its own, but one might say that having seen the animation, it seems like the block is teleporting. The goal is to make it so that it seems to any person that the block is walking slowly and smoothly. So the first step is to think about the part of the code that is affecting changing the position. Our variable is declared called x. x represents the x coordinate. If 10, if x is added to a smaller number, 
such as one and then the code is run the block does seem like it is moving slowly one problem was fixed now another problem needs to be fixed currently it moves a little bit at a time to change the speed not only does the position need to be changed but the time should be changed as well since speed is equal to, to distance divided by time so in to increase the time you decrease the uh, this increase the speed then time is decreased so 10 and now when the code is run the block runs almost smoothly and it takes about one two three four five five seconds as a challenge it would be interesting to think about whether or not it's possible to have the block start from one end of the screen and move vertically downward um, reach the bottom it should reach the bottom of the screen and it should take only three seconds so would it be possible to move the block from here to here basically would be the challenge question The goal of the video is to present a way to have a block travel start at one point of the screen and then travel at a certain speed. Um, in particular, it should reach the end of the screen in about three seconds or less. Firstly, to move vertically, so it should move vertically. To move vertically, one might want to write down Y. Y is just a name that may represent the Y coordinate. And then replace any number that represented the y coordinate y y should be should be put instead so finally y should be equal to y plus a number, um, so for example, one. So when the code is run, then uh, one can time how long it takes to reach the end. One, so. So the block was really slowly. So this 10 milliseconds, it should move every 10 milliseconds, so when the code is run, 1, 2, 3, it takes some time for it to reach the end of the um, screen. If 1 millisecond is used, 1, 2, One, two, three. Okay, so that took about uh, three seconds. A fun note is that set interval can be stacked. So one can write set interval on top of set interval. And 
and one can also observe a change in the speed. So when the code is run, the block moves even faster. So this is one way to increase the speed of an object moving. The goal of the video is to be able to control the movement of an image. At the moment, when the code is run by pressing run, the block moves on its own. However, there is another way to make the block move. One can simply just press a key, for example. After the key is pressed, then the block should move. There needs to be a, w a way to detect when a certain key is pressed. At the moment, window dot add event listener is written. Window may be thought of as a representation of the screen. Add event listener is can be thought of as a being written so that the compute so that any action like a click action can be. Um, can lead to a different action. So for example, if click is written, then some action will happen. So to test to see that it works, um, when the screen is clicked, some text will appear. document.get element by id uh, actually create element by creating an element one can write some text dot inner HTML is written so that some message could be written. And finally text So when the code is clicked, ideally, some text will appear. The goal of today's class is to be able to control the movement of a block. When the code is run, a blue block appears and it falls down. So the block moves when run. If someone, however, wanted to move the block by pressing on an arrow key or pressing on a key like A, one would need to use an add event listener. So 
right? If anything is clicked on the screen, something should appear. Now, if anything is pressed, something should appear. So when the code is run and the each key is pressed, H appears. And H is the key that was pressed. Suppose that if D is pressed, then the block should move to a certain direction. One, When D is pressed, the block, the position is increased by one. The value of the position is increased by one. E dot key represents the key that was pressed. D represents the letter that is being checked. If E dot key represents D, then X equals X plus one. So the position of X is moved by one. Challenge. When the key that represents the letter D is pressed, the block should move to the right. The block should move to the left if the key that represents the letter A is pressed, down if the key that represents the letter S is pressed, and up if the key that represents the letter W is pressed. solution is presented. So one way to control the movement of the block is to add an if statement. So if D is the key pressed, X should be added by one. The value should be added by one. If it's A, then X equals X minus one. If it is W, X, the vertical position is changed. The so Y should be added to one y equals y plus 1. 
and d uh, y equals y minus 1 because 0 is located at the very top left corner under the zero any positive value can be found that represents y so it'd be y equals y minus one and then finally uh, s y So when the code is run, it's sh one should be able to mm, the image should be moved should be able to be moved to any other position. The goal of the video is to be able to when the code is run create a block. The block should be able to move in a way such that one can see that it is jumping. To start, A function is created every second the block should move at least seemingly by a little bit the Y position represents the position of the block The, the original y position will be 300. Next, the screen should be white in the beginning. To animate something, the screen should become white first and then something can be shown. And then the block could be colored. In code, it's important to write another bracket if one bracket was written. And just be aware of small details. So this should be how set intervals written. The function is written here, the time is written here. Now, the position is set here, and the position changes by plus one. Ideally, when the code is run, the block should move in a certain direction. Typically, Plus is used to go down and minus is used to go up.